Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. We are on part two um, of our interview with Hillary Barrett and we're talking about her book, I Ching, Walking Your Path, Changing Your Future. And um, we were talking a little bit as an intro in the first segment. And on this segment, we're gonna be talking about how to actually do an, uh, uh, a, a divination oracle reading with the I Ching. So um, we're going to, I'm going to go through very briefly showing you instructions of what I did um, when I actually did a reading before meeting with Hillary. So, um, um, so it started off and I'm going to share my screen because you just did such a good job writing, beautiful job writing this. I don't think I need to like recreate anything, but just show um, some of the materials that I pulled from Hillary's um, um, information that she sent me. So the first thing you want to do is think about the question. And we talked a little bit in that in the first segment, but you said that your questions can be used for decisions. Like what if I take this job? What if I didn't? Um, uh, there's solving problems. How do I handle this? How can I help? Um, understanding why do I react this way or realizing your intentions? How can I? Um, but that there's First of all, it's like really under important that you describe to ask the best question. So, and, and you have like a really good template of what do I need to understand about dot, dot, dot? What best to do about dot, dot, that? How can I, what if I? Um, so these are all the kind of, and you can actually get the guide on um, onlineclarity.co.uk. Um, yeah, um, can I? If, if, if you go to onlineclarity.co.uk forward slash begin, that will take you to the to the beginner's teaching course that includes includes this, what the oracle is made of, how to consult it and the rest. Okay. So it's any the domain other, forward slash begin and you're away. Any other thoughts on um, crafting questions? I know I'm actually doing a really brief version mm -hmm. of this, but anything that you want to add? Um, not really. I just mostly not to worry about it too much um, okay the, po the point of the question is not um, to make sure the oracle knows what you mean because you know the oracle knows what you mean the point is really to make sure you know what you mean and what you're asking for mm -hmm. and it's like you're asking the oracle please paint me a picture of something you know it might be a picture of me doing a good job at this or it might be a picture of what will happen if i go and do that um and you need to know what you're asking it to paint a picture of so you'll know what you're looking at. Okay, so here's what I did. I actually had um, um, had a, a very long, bus a 12 page business plan that I was writing. And that mm -hmm. was my own introspection on um, my soul's mission and some of the things that I'd like to do in the next change in my life. So the, the I Ching is a book of transitions. I'm going through empty nesting, which is my, both of my kids have left for college and I'm trying to figure out what to next do in my vocation. So here's my question. This is what it looks like. It was scratched out five or six times, <laughs> but I came up with, what do I need to clarify? to my soul, you know, about my soul's mission. And, and then I thought, well, I, I don't really have to add much. The I Ching knows because I'm already thinking about this large business plan that I wrote, that that is really what I'm asking about. So I'm just assuming the I Ching gets it. Like I don't have to go into a long elaboration. This question yeah. should be sufficient. That's a very good, very good thought. Assume the I Ching gets it. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. <laughs> Okay, then I took my quarters and I um, and I tossed them in different variations, either three tails, two heads, one tail, two heads, one tail, or two tails, one head, two heads, one tail, or three heads. And each of these converts to a number, six, seven, eight, or nine, um, according to the I Ching. So um, I wanted to ask you about this whole old yin this whole thing of old yin, young yin, young, yin. what is this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it has this weird and ridiculous quality of being, of sounding incredibly complicated when you're explaining it and then taking about um, sort of no time at all once you're used to it. Right. Um, yeah, and when you cast, you cast a reading, you cast one hexagram and that, has six lines and they're one of two kinds of line they're either 
yin, broken, or solid, yang. So, yeah, let me do a really informal visual aid and hold it up to the camera. <laughs> If you cast that one, you if which you, I believe you did, um, you have hexagram fifteen and you have yin yin yang yin yin yin. Um, what you actually, I believe you actually cast a six for the top two lines mm -hmm. um, instead of an eight, which we would we would write like that. Mm -hmm. um, so the hexagram you look up to start with is this one with the three yin lines at the top, which mm -hmm. make which make the trigram Earth. Um, but because but those because they're sixes, they're changing. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea is that is that old yin is is in the process of changing into yang. It's on the it's on the tipping point. Um, mm -hmm. It's just becoming the other. So then you get a second hexagram which um, you go know, again with the visual aid looks like that. Uh, where those top two lines have changed and become yang. Hmm. Um, and what does it mean? So what does this all yin yang changing? What, what does it essentially mean? Um, well, yin means open, soft, receptive, um, allowing, and yang means active, um, acting. The, and the simplest um, in explanation from them I've heard is that uh, yang acts and yin is acted on. Mm -hmm. um, mm. So in my line five and six, I'm moving from um yin um is it old, yin to yang and i don't what is mm. the old what's the significance of this old and new idea um the idea is that um yin and yang are two halves of a whole and they are always changing into one another okay um if it's young then it's only just become young become yin or yang and so it's going to stay that way for a while and so in your second um, hexagram, it's going to be the same. Um, if it's old, then it's, you know, it's, it's well, yin that's developed so well that it's just about to turn into yang. Um, uh, so, the, so the old ones are, are the changing ones. Uh, okay, you, don't so have, it, you don't have to use the word old. You can just say changing. It's fine. But um, what I'm interpreting from what you're saying is that there is something, it, the thing to note is that something that is in transition and changing from one thing to another, from a dissolution of something maybe to a brand new thing or a brand new thing dissolving to kind of a more, you know, like receiving receptive state. So it's, I see. So mm -hmm. that's basically how you would see the lines changing. Yeah. And you're I, looking I, I, I see them as kind of the, the light the lights are coming on, the juice is flowing, the change is happening, the, the current is flowing in these lines. Um, and they are the ones that are showing you the relationship with the next hexagram. Okay, got it. So in, in the two diagrams that you showed of like one hexagram and then another hexagram, can you explain then? So the first hexagram you should interpret in what way? Um, essentially that's where the answer to your question lies. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm, you asked about what kinds of things you needed to know. And so your answer in that hexagram, which is 15, hexagram number 15, which is called integrity or authenticity or modesty. So the things you need to know are to do with having authenticity and modesty and integrity. Mm -hmm. um, the second hexagram kind of lies in the it lies in the background it sets a context and it's also um stephen karcher called it a relating hexagram mm -hmm. um it's about how you relate to it what it's about for you so it can be a personal theme um kind of it can be you know the sort of chapter heading for this chapter of your life perhaps in your mm -hmm. reading mm -hmm. um and that hexagram is 53 which is gradual development 
Mm. Um, mm. Mm. Okay. Which is Very essentially good. telling you that things are things are changing gradually and more slowly than you think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, amongst, good. amongst a lot of other things, but that's yes. what, that's a lot yeah. That's so that's basically that. so that's basically a really high level of, you know, we created the question. Um, I had a question about understanding. Um, when I toss them, um, there is kind of a mindset that you need to have, right? Is it, you know, is there, or what kind of mindset do you usually have as you're uh, tuning in for either five seconds, six seconds, or like 60 minutes? Um, just sincerely wanting to know the answer and being willing to pay attention to it. Okay. And, and there's um, no question too big or too small? Nope. Okay. Absolutely my, not. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when I was younger, my girlfriend um, was really into the tarot and she said, I think I've gone crazy because I'm asking the tarot things like, should I have Thai food tonight or Italian? <laughs> and she said, I, and I wonder whether this is disrespectful. And I said, I, I don't really know. <laughs> But right, I, I I wouldn't be worried about disrespecting the oracle, like we were saying. It's you know it's three thousand years old. It's had lots of conversations with people. We probably can't offend it now, not so it's <laughs> going to stop. You know, you're not going to be personally responsible for offending this oracle so much. It says no, I'm not talking to anyone anymore. Um, it, it's going to keep working. <laughs> okay. Um, and I there's there's the question of self respect, of course. Um, you know, it might be a matter of self-respect to be able to decide whether you're having Thai or Italian for yourself. Right. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, anything else in terms of before the touring costs, while the touring costs, and then um, anything else? I, I want to ask you just one final question in terms of um, how you've actually used I Ching yourself um, in terms of um, incorporating this into your life because you know there's there are a whole bunch of different elements that are inc included into the I Ching there's cardinal directions there's seasonality um every single one of these has like a uh um an external and internal component meaning there may be like what's happening generally in the world right now so the I Ching has like a a, a segment by segment of you know certain during these certain times during the year this is happening and you know that people have marked out all these different things mm -hmm. how, how do you personally use this in terms of other areas aside from divination in terms of seasonality daily contemplations really i just use this as an oracle i just talk with it and listen to it so I sometimes I will be asking specific questions, um, which might be as small as, okay, what if I buy this software that's on special offer? Um, mm -hmm. and, and might also be something, something enormous. Um, and sometimes um, I will ask just, what should I be aware of now? Mm. I, I like doing that once a week. What should mm. I be aware of this week? Um, it kind of tunes the inner radio, you know, reconnects you and mm. also and also sort of clears the air. I'm if I've gone into this mad phase of asking you about all the software and none of the things that actually <laughs> matter, um, which you know can happen. <laughs> right. Then what should I be aware of? Um it, it sort of gives the Oracle the chance to set the agenda and uh, say, yeah, actually over here yeah um got it love it okay so we've been talking to um hillary um barrett about her book um I Ching, walking your path and creating your future and in the next segment we're going to be talking about interpretation and so there are lots of different ways and lots of different books that you can get these are two ones that i have mm, um nice. And then I have also the, the classic one that's been around by William Reinheim. I don't even know his name, how to pronounce his last name. Um, Wilhelm? <laughs> yes, that one. Never far, never far away. Yeah. Yes, I have that mm -hmm. one as well. So there are many different interpretations of 
what each of these um, hexagrams mean. Um, so in the next segment, we're going to be talking about how to interpret um, the results that you get from doing the toss. Thank you so much.